So this is a, a Soviet Union game. And when you load up, the capital's in Vladivostok. That should tell you situation's not great. They've blown out one of our engines. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Fix it, fix it, fix it. Yeah, we've been pushed past the Urals. We've not even taken that many casualties, three and a half million. And we're pretty close-ish to surrender. The Germans have pushed as far as Omsk. Omsk being the final stronghold, well, stronghold, the next stop on the Trans-Siberian Railway. So, what has gone wrong here? The player who sent this in describes it as being underprepared for Germany while using expert AI. That's probably a bit of an understatement. So, let, let's take a look here. Relief might be coming. Italy's probably going to die. I never see them do well here. Germany has gone full hog and pushed very, very hard, but I, I, I think we can come back from this. I'm not entirely familiar with Road to 56 or Expert AI, so I don't really know just how much all of this changes, but I don't think it matters all that much, honestly. Let's first take stock of things. So, logistics. We have plenty of everything except for a slight deficiency in tanks. I can fix that. No, I like tanks. You like tanks. We all like tanks. And I'd love to have one. And that is where today's sponsor, World of Tanks, comes in, both to offer you a chance to experience some digital tank goodness and to bring me a step closer to being able to buy one. This video is sponsored by World of Tanks, where strategy and action unite in epic tank battles. I love tank battles. Join a free-to-play world with over 800 available tanks. Find your battle style from either stealthy maneuvers with a fast Stug to frontline engagement with the Heavy Tiger. New players kick off with the Cromwell B, 250,000 credits and 7 days of premium access, plus you get to try out the Tiger 131, T78 and Type 64 for 10 battles each. You can team up globally for some strategic warfare and immerse yourself in a blend of history and intense action. And veterans among you, fear not, there's something for you here as well. You will enjoy 3 days of premium access, a 7 day rental of the Centurion Mark V-1 RAAC or 100,000 credits using the link down in the description below. Also, you get a very unique bargain camouflage. So join the community of over 100 million players and for all these rewards and to start your journey, not to mention helping me keep the bank from foreclosing on my house, click the link in the description to download and sign up for World of Tanks now. Battlefield awaits, fellas. And a little bit of an anti-tank problem, which looking at the front line shouldn't be an issue. Most of these German divisions look like Jäger divisions. I haven't seen a single tank on this front line, so I'm gonna do away with the uh, anti-tank stuff. Okay, and actually quite a big stockpile of artillery and infantry equipment, which is nice. I see that you're selling some stuff right now. Wouldn't do that until we've, um, you know, recovered a little bit. I wouldn't be selling any of this for now. Got a little bit of air, a little bit of uh, everything, really. I'm still making tanks. What I'm going to start is I'm going to add anti-air. We're, we're going to need it. Uh, dial back the tanks a bit. We're going to dial back air a little bit, rebalance it, mostly because we don't have air bases. <laughs> really, it's not a lot of air bases. Don't need that many trains. We've got a thousand in stockpile. We're probably just going to need guns and artillery. Of course, additional tanks would be nice. How's the research looking? Oof, you've gone concentrated. Well, it is what it is. Atomic research, 4% research speed isn't going to help you in this situation. While nukes are cool, you're never going to be able to use them unless you have air power. So maybe let's just focus on our own units, I guess. A little confused as to what you've been researching. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with Route to 56. I really really don't know half the things here. Let's just start with a little bit of AA and artillery upgrades. Yeah. Four years ahead of time, 144 days. Yes. More artillery research and we'll pick up the AA research as well. Okay. Rest of the stuff we'll just keep as is. What are we fielding? Ah, well, it's decent. You've also got 77 units of infantry template 11. Let's see what infantry at template 11 is. Ah, you're on a budget. I'm going to give you a little tip here. Remove this infantry division and replace it with an artillery unit. We have plenty of total artillery available to make this change. What this is going to do is make this unit deal out a lot more soft attack and it is considerably cheaper than your 21 with infantry. So this is a good frontline unit just to fill out a frontline. It's reasonably expensive because it uses artillery, but it has a good strong bite to it and doesn't require that much supply. So 
This is a good frontline unit with an excellent combat with. This is considered by the community to be optimal. You, you can't see my air quotes, but this works really well. I would remove the support anti-tank because I haven't seen a tank on your front line. I'm also tempted to remove the field hospitals. Now, why would I do that? I don't think they're worth the production cost. Yes, the less experience loss is nice and recovering the manpower is nice, but take a look at this. I don't know if this is a bug, but skim past the fact that we have women in the workforce not once, but two, three, four, five, six times? Yeah, we're gonna be mobilizing plenty of men here. I don't need field hospitals. I am tempted to take cavalry recon. It increases our soft attack. Ooh. How much does it increase soft attack by? Ooh, about 30. So it's good about a soft attack. I'm thinking this will be our frontline unit. We can afford the expense. The units that are in the queue are inf. We'll just deploy them uh, somewhere around Omsk and then convert them to template 11. I really need to re rename this. There, guard rifles. Yeah. You've also got some tanks here. Decent. Organization's fine. Combat with is fine. I would prefer 30. 30 operates well in forests. 35 has a little bit more bite to it, but I, I prefer 30 with. It's easy to produce. I, I would add a couple of things to this. Support anti-air, critical if you don't have air power. And logistics companies, because obviously you're going to need logistics if you're running tanks. So we'll just add those to our elite tank divisions. Speaking of elite tank divisions, we have four. I found three of them on Omsk. Where's the fourth one? Ah, dying in the Siberian waste of Salekart. Yeah, I'm not saving that tank. I, I don't I don't think I can get it out. Now, organizing, first thing, I'm gonna assign logistics wizard to Alexander Yegorov. It's like a no-brainer if you're gonna fight in Siberia. I think you were running a mod that I don't have active now, but you have 81 men assigned to a single general. I think you're using that mod that allows you to just assign more units to generals. I don't like it, and I prefer to do things properly, so let's just reorganize this, shall we? I will just make a field marshal order with all the infantry, an attack order, very ambitious, and the armor can sit on Omsk, and it's from Omsk that we need to strike out. Speaking of striking out, I see a gap here. There's no unit on this plane style. Yeet and yeet. We're gonna attack with these units to pin those divisions in place. We might attack these units to pin them in place as well, just so they don't reinforce. I want to get a foothold on the east, west, west side of this river line, so I can move my offensive from there, because Omsk is pretty much the only place I can launch offensives from. This is where I have supply. I need to start pushing towards this supply hub, that supply, you know, just pushing back towards the Urals along that railway. Anything to the south and extreme north is pointless. There's no point to fighting there unless you're ready to just steamroll the entire line. We need to be tactical and methodical, capture supply hubs, force the Germans back. We got spies as well. And for some reason, you're spying on the Brits. Let's save that for later. Let's start spying on the Germans exclusively until we've pushed them out of our territory. The reason we want to do that is uh, why are you spying on Sweden? Let's just build a spy network in Germany that will allow our counteroffensive to just go on a little bit more smoothly. We got across the river. We can hold these diversionary attacks now. Just make sure to get the tanks in here and it will be the tanks who do the pushing. Most of this stuff is planes, but deep snow and snow is going to make it difficult to advance. Keep pushing forward. Keep driving on to victory. We have to get to these supply hubs and they're very, very far away. Yeah, tanks are very, very slow in this. Well, anything is very, very slow in this deep snow and snowing. So not the best season for, a, for an offensive in Russia. Well, sitting on our ass isn't an option right now. Man, I'm shocked at how decent the Russian economy still is, despite the fact that you've lost, what, 50% of your territory? And the 50% you lost probably housed about 70 to 80% of your industry. And we still have factories pumping stuff out. We're going to train a couple more guard rifles to fill out the divisions. 18 should allow me to fill out that army. I would like to train additional tank divisions, so we'll see if we can actually pull that off. And also be renaming the tank divisions after channel members. I would very much love to do this automatically, but I can, so I'll have to do it manually. Anyone who signs up for a membership to the channel will have a chance to see their name featured as one of my divisions, either one of the elites or just a regular army unit 
depending on if I can get the mod to work. And it allows you to contribute a little bit to the glorious victory. And it's my way of thanking you for your support to the channel. It does mean a lot. It really, really does. I'm going to grab experts in camouflage. Gives us a little bit more damage reduction against cast. And it's fairly short after that. Either things like positive heroism or the new Soviet woman for more stability and just a general improvement overall. And some industry stuff. So the Air Force things. It's like free air bases. Improvements to the Air Force or the tank. Yeah, let's grab this actually. Superior war machines, Soviet artillery, and then we merge the plants. Definitely going to help. Yeah, I'm going to accept all the lend lease I can get. Ooh, 123 Crusader tanks. Yes, please. Sure, I'll take him. We should be steadily advancing along the Trans-Siberian Railway towards those supply hubs. It's going to be a pain, but it's the only way I see forward, honestly. Yay, we've, re we've recovered a victory point. One whole victory point. Oh, a couple more things I just noticed looking at production. You're not using your designer. So the light anti-air, for instance, you want to assign an MIO to it. So all the equipment it does produce is slightly better or significantly better, depending on just how good your MIO is. Same for the artillery. Just assign the MIO. It costs five army XP every time, I think, but it's so worth it. Same for like everything. You've not assigned MIOs to most of your stuff. Oh, oh boy. Is this what your cast looks like? What does your fighters look like? So the yak, what does the yak look like? Ugh. Like, you've got a major imbalance here between air defense and air attack. You want these to be a little bit more closely together. Range is fine, but range isn't everything. I would remove the drop tanks and replace them with a little bit more armor, armor plates. It makes the, the range go down, yes, but more air defense is more good. I also don't like the large cannons. I personally, and I know don't know if this is worth it, but I personally just cram the whole thing full with heavy machine guns. It's a lot more agile. It's a lot lighter. It's a lot cheaper, but I don't know if it's good. So just heavy machine guns here, I think, and uh, extra fuel tanks, a little bit of armor and self-sealing fuel tanks. Okay. Are we looking to get our first encirclement here? It's not much, I admit, but it is something. Movement speed is horribly slow, though. Like, whoa, these guys are slow as shit. All right. First encirclement of the campaign. Let's quickly close that. Three divisions destroyed. Now we can continue on our glorious conquest or reconquest, depending on how you want to frame this. Now, I have manpower and equipment. What would happen if I were to just tell this guy to attack? Oh, that's a lot of green, though. Let's just attack for a little bit. Just apply pressure just to see what happens. We have secured the next supply hub down the line. Now I need to make it north towards Timuyu, Timuyu, Timuyen. Let's drive there. Let's march there. And then we'll uh, reevaluate. I should probably halt this offensive. It's not that expensive, but I don't need to be needlessly throwing lives away. We might just want to rush towards Chelyabinsk while I'm here. Keep the Germans on the back foot. They're probably really, really busy dealing with Muslims. Mussolini's mess. Yeah, looks like it. So want to take advantage of that. Advance while we can. Also, everybody's joining the allies. Holy crap. We're also going to switch out static warfare. I'm not sure if I want flexible organization or smoke and fire. Breakthrough is really nice and suppressive barrage is really good. Just going to go with smoke and fire and replace overwhelming fire with suppressive barrage. All right, we made it to the next supply hub as well. Let's just halt the offensives, get everyone into the positions and reevaluate. We can put Push on once we've recovered some organization. This has uh, this has gone very well so far, very well. But we're running into a little more stiff resistance, so do not want to overextend myself. Also, game is running really slow. I think it's just a mod. Yeah, I think the Germans have overplayed their hand. I'm pushing everywhere. Major offensive should drive the Germans back a little bit. We're a long way from Omsk now. We're actually advancing at a respect respectable rate. Ooh, I'm gonna need more trucks. Yeah, let's prioritize that. Then we'll look at planes. Everything's moving along. We're gonna need to trade. Fortunately, there's a lot of people nearby with stuff. How's the Air Force looking? It's not very useful yet since, again, I don't have the uh, required air bases in my hands as of yet, but soon. If I can counterattack that division, I can take Ufa and I would have a supply hub on the other side of the Urals. And that is the jumping off point I need. That spring 
board to launch me further and further and further. More divisions mobilizing, even more tank divisions on the way as well. Ooh, I am losing a lot of tanks though. Tank production might need to be cranked up. All right, from Ufa, just keep driving. Kubishev is next on the stopping point. I'm driving this one tank division through towards uh, this supply hub. I'll need to plug it into my own railway. So I need to build a railway, something like that. So we can quickly hook into this hub and then push on the Caspian Sea. Looks incredibly convoluted and weird. I agree, it is. My goal is simply to go for a swift encirclement of the Turkmenistan region so I can come to the aid of my Iranian puppet and encircle some German divisions. I need to destroy German divisions, not just push them back, because if I push them back, I just have to fight them somewhere else later on, which I don't want to do. It's so much easier to destroy a division. That way, you'll never have to fight it again. Meanwhile, keep strategically redeploying units to fill in behind the tanks, making these really weird pushes. With the supply hub here connected, I actually have supply. How is our equipment looking? Short on motorized support equipment, tanks. So the usual suspects are low, but we can recover, we can improve. This is disgusting. It's hilarious and I love it. I've just driven to Kubishev. It's some sort of field trip. That should greatly tax the German capacity to respond. This front line's getting weird and wacky. I am here for it. Speaking of weird and wacky, Italy is, yeah. This is very weird and wacky. All right, we're past the Urals faster than I had anticipated. The push to the Caspian Sea is a nightmare though. Mostly supply, as you'd expect. Honestly, can't complain though about the speed of this advance. Pocket after pocket is being created. Let's make sure the tanks focus a little more on this part so we can get to the Caspian Sea. We are destroying German units left and right. Good, 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 good. Just gotta make sure we don't overextend ourselves. That's the real danger here is that this counteroffensive lures me into a false sense of security. Ah, perfect. We have created encirclement. Oh, encirclement. We have reached the Caspian Sea, and with that, we have effectively cut off the uh, region of Turkmenistan from the German army. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's so expert about this AI, but I'm not very impressed. What's this? Ireland's gone to war with itself, okay? We're about to take the one port on the Caspian Sea, then we'll send out our Caspian Navy, because apparently we have one, to start raiding this area. And that would mean they won't be able to ship supplies from Baku towards the other ports in this region. And that actually ensures encirclement of the area, which is exactly what I wanted. I also want to plug this into my network. How do I do this again? Shortest line, please. Thank you. I don't need this to be level five, though. The Soviet counterattack is going exceptionally well. It does unfortunately appear that the Germans have linked up their Turkmenistan front with their Caucasus front by going through Tehran. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Even if they use it to pull the troops out, that's fine. It just takes pressure off really that's that's what i really need just a little bit less pressure on me the great war of liberation rages on and i i'd say we've done well i mean we we started over where where, where did we start omsk where is omsk here so we started there i'd say we've liberated a, a, a fair slice of land yay encirclement around the area of stalinabad all right so we'll, we'll crush that easily this is also getting encircled we're getting it done we are getting it done and once the German Germans are gone. I don't have to worry about them anymore. The Great Liberation continues. I'm tempted to launch a naval invasion of Baku, which is funny because you can't do that in base game. Just hop across here, land near Baku, and then quickly make like a rush towards the Persian territory just to encircle all of this down here. They wouldn't be able to do anything. I'm going to need to find some spared troops to do it though, because I am a little taxed. And once this thing collapses, I'm diverting all of these to Iran because Iran is is unfortunately collapsing quite rapidly. There'll be 21 divisions, 27, 28, yeah, 28 divisions to assist Iran. All right, let's see if we can make something of that naval invasion. I doubt it. I see a lot of units in that area. I gotta try something, right? If I can land, I'll try and follow up. Ooh. Yeah, I'll try and follow up with tanks to punch a hole. Tanks with a little bit of infantry support have made successful landfall. Good, 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 good. Now expand the beachhead. We'll take the port here as well. I can get some units in there to reinforce it, ideally. Oh god, like the lagging, the lagging is starting to really 
annoy me. Okay, 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 okay. So this tile, if I can take that tile, I'll have the encirclement I was looking for. Oh, yes. And that gives me a front in the Caucasus that I can work from. That I can work with this. God, that is a lot of divisions. I'm just going to let the uh, Iranian army mop that up though because uh, it's, it's mountainous they're fully surrounded they're starving 45 percent attrition i'm pretty sure even the ai with its terrible divisions can mop that up i'm just gonna you know i'm, I'm just gonna ignore that pretend i don't see it really uh, i don't i don't want to bother offensives time so let's uh, try to push north from the caucasus to link up with the main front get okay, a couple of extra divisions in let's uh two another two another four divisions should be able to afford that now, these guys are all effective Effectively encircled, so well, I guess Tbilisi counts as a capital, and so they're not really encircled, but still, but still. Yeah, it very much looks like they are collapsing quickly. Oh, another pretty big encirclement. Okay, pin, pin, pin. And you pin there. Make sure they don't break out of that one. Destroy a little bit more, a little bit more. And we'll have the Caucasus front locked down. And then I'll launch an offensive northwards to link up with the main front. And I can present one big old front to the enemy. Crush them. Yeah, this is quite a few divisions we've got trapped here. Quite a few divisions. Oh, well, that reminds me. I should fire Vyacheslav Molotov. Goodbye. And replace him with somebody useful like uh, Khrushchev or Iron Lazar. Let's go with Khrushchev. Meanwhile, tanks have managed to uh, truck all the way here. So that should allow me to link up with the main front relatively easily. Yep. Railway connection fixed. And then we'll drive up to Stalingrad or Hindenburg, as they call it now. While we wait for that, let's hit Operation Uranos. Major bonuses to ourselves. Launch an all-out offensive and a tank run along this railway towards Hindenburg or Stalingrad, as it shall once again be named. Germans are on the back foot everywhere, losing in Europe, losing in Italy, losing in the Balkans. It's time we added some more pressure to this. We want to sit strong at that negotiation negotiating table. Well, this is going to be humiliating. Germany's capitulating. Oh, capitulating. They're, they're losing and they're losing quickly in the West and in the East. I can probably make grand sweeping moves, but almost all of my forces are deployed elsewhere. Like we're, we're fully committed attack, 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 and all that. But I think Germany is going to capitulate before I can liberate all of my own stuff. So the French Republic's back in business. The Reichskommissariats have fallen. Italy's gone. Yugoslavia and Greece are pushing hard. And I'm still trying to mop up Iran. There goes Reichskommissariat Ukraine. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I don't need funkier front lines than I already have. Contribution rising, 33%. I've got so many factories, I don't even know what to assign them all to. I I got plenty of everything. Just keep going. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Bit of a race now. It's not even a race to Berlin. It's just a race if I can liberate my own country faster than the Allies can uh, crush Germany. And we're back in Moscow. Hurrah, the capital reclaimed. A uh, downside is that really screws with our supply network. All right, sweet. Oh, God. Oh, God, this is disgusting. Okay, so that's Moscovian out. Every time this happens, like, the front line gets more and more disgusting. Yugoslav units have seized Vienna. It's all Jover now. I don't think there's a German army left. Now, they've taken so many casualties. Well, admittedly, so have I, but the Germans have taken so many casualties. I, I don't think they have the fighting power left to stop me. This isn't even difficult at this point. It's over. I've won, but it's such a messy affair that I am annoyed to the point that I don't really want to keep playing. It's just incredibly annoying. We are thundering into Germany. I had hope for more war participation, but I, I should be able to get a nice slice of the pie here if I can occupy most of that stuff. Still racing to Berlin. I think we can uh, get the rush for Berlin mission. Do I want a Yalta? I don't really want a Yalta, but you know what? Fine. For the sake of cooperation, we'll Yalta. Let's make some clean borders after this. And it looks like somebody just nuked Berlin. You know, that's unfortunate because I'm supposed to be getting that in the peace deal. That's, uh... It's not cool. This is almost over. Soviet units will storm Berlin. Argentine units have just landed in Rostock, so I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's funny. Fairly historical borders, except for the fact that um, a lot of different people are involved who are not supposed to be involved, but I, I 
good. Yeah. Okay. Germany's gone. There goes Berlin. I don't think they have much left. No, this is pretty much it. Shockingly, they, they still have quite a large army and industry considering, you know, the situation. Now, I do wonder, but I'm not going to do it. But I do wonder if I took over Germany now, could I still win? You know, I'm going to make a save. <laughs> <laughs> this is a future project. I'm going to make a save, tag in as Germany and see if I can still win. Anyway, I'm not going to do anything else. Uh, let's just, just win this and get it over with. There we go. The Reich has capitulated. We have done our duty. Let's create our puppets and be done. And with that, we've set up the world for quite... <laughs> Quite a oh, what? I was gonna say we've set up the world for quite a beautiful Cold War. I think mostly historical borders, except for Yugoslavia. If you guys want to see me try that stupid save game I made, uh, feel free to let me know. And uh, I can say now with confidence, I am not impressed by expert AI. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys will enjoy this next one as well. See ya.